three elite cyclocross world championships, two national championships on the road, a monument win, to have those results on your palm array would make anyone a legend. To do so before you turn 26? Well, that was pretty much unheard of until these two came along. Wout wow, Van Aert has dominated this world championship. He's the world champion, Mathieu van der Poel. Wout wow, Van Aert now also takes the silver medal and he punches the air. Van der Poel is going to take it, is he Van Aert coming with a lunge? Whoa, across the line! All sports thrive on rivalries. The Yankees and the Red Sox. Senna versus Prost. They make movies about this stuff. McEnroe versus Borg. Ford versus Ferrari. And what we are seeing in cycling right now with Matthew Vanderpoel versus Wout Van Aert, it is as good a rivalry as any of them. And we are living in its golden age. This is the kind of stuff that makes you want to tune in and watch bike racing every week. It makes you want to go out and ride your bike. And that's what I'm going to go do. I'm gonna go for a bike ride and talk about Matthew Vanderpoel and Wack Van Aert. Let's go. Now Wack Van Aert and Matthew Vanderpoel, they both are worthy of the title rider of their generation. Their versatility, their strength, it's pretty much unmatched. It is just our good fortune that they happen to be born a few months apart. They have been at this rivalry thing for a long time. In fact, there has been no cyclocross for Wout Van Aert without Matthew Van Der Poel. From something like eight years of age at Wout's very first cyclocross race, there was Matthew Van Der Poel. It's a bit strange to, uh, to compete uh, already against each other when we were still kids. I can remember this uh, literally from the first day I was racing, I, we saw him. Yeah, everyone was looking at them. They had the most beautiful bikes. Uh, they were have the rubber band kit, everything. Matthew Van Der Poel and Wout Van Aert, they both appeared on the world stage in 2012, the Junior Cyclocross World Championships in Coxida, and Matthew Van Der Poel drew first blood. Van Der Poel won the Junior World Championships ahead of an equally jubilant Wout Van Aert. 2014, Wout Van Aert got revenge. He won the U23 World Championships in cyclocross. And then in 2015, Van Der Poel and Van Aert both made the decision to age out of the U23s prematurely and contest the elite World Championships. We push each other to our limits. You always have to beat the other strongest guy. We came from the under 23 and, and we kind of skipped uh, one step. We Im immediately were the best as well in, in elite category. The tears are already falling because this rider at 20 years of age has driven away from the entire elite men's field. The emotion breaks out. He's the world champion. Matthew Van Cyclocross became a two-horse race. It was only a question of which one, Van Der Poel or Van Aert, would win. There were no more smiles for the rider in second place. We're always friendly to each other, but uh, he's uh, one of my biggest opponents. It's a terrible opponent to, to beat because he never gives up and he's always really motivated, so it makes it hard to beat him. Wow, Van Aert is the world champion. He sits up. He's finally done it. He waves to the crowd. Belgium is going to party for about three weeks. Van Aert is the world champion. He takes it. By 2018, the two were still committing a lot of time and energy to their cyclocross program, but they were beginning to branch out, test the waters, racing professionally on the road, and resuming the rivalry in a new discipline. Besides cyclocross, we, we choose our own path. I improved myself in time trialing and sprinting and uh, Mathieu chose the path of the, of the mountain bike. He's coming to the road as well and uh, we already saw what, what, uh, what's happening then. So I think uh, in future he, he will do the same. And that brings us to today. What in my opinion is the golden age of the Wout Van Aert, Matthew Van Der Poel rivalry. And maybe the golden age of cycling period, who knows? We are seeing Matthew Van Der Poel and Wout Van Aert go head to head. One wins on one weekend, the other wins on the other. There's no clear favorite. 
they're doing the same thing on the road and producing some of the most spectacular performances in the process. Look at Van der Poel going from behind them. Look at Van der Poel on the left hand side. Mathieu Van der Poel's going to do it. Mathieu Van der Poel, this is incredible. I have never, ever seen anything like this in my life. Mathieu Van der Poel makes it back, drives it on from a long way and has pulled off one of the most incredible wins you are ever likely to see in the history of professional cycling. Wout van Aert is positioned absolutely perfectly. This is a big lead out. Case ball, Wout van Aert, it's a drag race. Wout van Aert looking for the victory on the line. Wout van Aert takes stage five. Unbelievable win by Wout van Aert. Wout van Aert now heading towards the top of La Planche de Belfi. Wout van Aert has ridden a superb individual time trial. Wout van Aert is going to go top of the leaderboard. What a time for Wout van Aert. What can't this bike rider do? In 2021, Matthew van der Poel, who has never done a Grand Tour to date, will be in attendance at the Tour de France, where he will inevitably run into Wout van Aert once again. What the two push themselves to do is anybody's guess. Suffice it to say, it's probably going to be pretty spectacular. But there is a sad note, and it is why I am calling this the golden age. There are those who think that this isn't sustainable, that they can't simply keep up the intensity of racing through the winter and cycle cross, pile on the demands of the World Tour Road calendar year after year. Philippe Gilbert is in that camp. I don't know if it's uh, possible to hold uh, this level and this intensity of life for so long because mentally I think it's really demanding because they don't have uh, any life uh, except cycling, you know. So maybe they're going to really have a really short career and, and really successful career or they're going to have to choose for one discipline or the other. I don't know if they can hold on like uh, being like 350 days maybe uh, on top. It's not so easy, I think, mentally to, to keep it uh, at this intensity. Now, Gilbert does give them credit. He thinks that they have done what no other cyclocross racer has been able to do, going from an off-road discipline and performing at their level on the road. Whether or not Matthew Van Der Poel and Wout Van Aert can keep this up for years to come, whether or not they get pulled in the direction of one discipline or another is a question I would rather not spend too much time asking myself. Instead, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy every race that those two line up at because it's going to be a show. He waits and he's taken him over to the barriers and shut that room down. And he looks now, surely it's uh, between these two with 200 meters to go. Van Aert has to go, Van Aert goes. And here we go, Mathieu van der Poel reacts. They're locked together, Van Aert alongside him. Van Aert, Van der Poel alongside each other. Van der Poel powering ahead of Van Aert. Whoa, across the line. 